You're gonna get one? <laughs> yeah. Yeah? Oh yeah. So you just try it on? I put it on for about 30 seconds and I could, in the first 10 seconds, I knew the difference already. All right, so real quick, before we go outside and we do this flight of first impression, Ian's gonna get in a quad ready, we're gonna be going out and flying. I wanted to go over for, especially for those of you guys out there who are new to FPV, new to goggles, maybe you're looking at getting your first set and you're just kind of curious as to why these are $500 versus some of the other ones. And I've kind of broken it down to, in, in my opinion, there's about eight main different kinds of features that you're going to pay for with different kinds of FPV goggles. The first of which is going to be resolution and that's pretty straightforward. Um, basically the resolution of the little tiny screens in there now, none of these are gonna be anywhere near the resolution of like your cell phone or any of your TVs or stuff like that. And that's okay because FPV signals are coming in on an analog frequency. So they're gonna be low resolution anyways. Starting out at the top, these have a 960 by 720 resolution. I guess at one point it, that was considered HD. Um, it, is, it is a pretty good resolution for goggles. Now, like I said earlier, the FPV transmission is analog. So the resolution isn't great that's coming in anyways. But say you were uh, gonna be using this for something like a Phantom or something like that, it has that extra resolution, uh, which which is nice. Um, it's not necessarily a necessity. Uh, it's not really that visibly different because you're only getting so much resolution from your FPV quad, but it is something that you're paying for with these goggles. Uh, the second thing is field of view. And the best way I can describe field of view is, it, yes, it is like how big the screen looks when you look in the goggle, but think of a movie theater. And when you go to a movie theater, you always have the people, normally the young kids like, going to the very front row because they like looking at a huge screen. Older people like myself, I like getting in the middle. Basically, field of view is the same thing. It's basically how far away the screen feels. This is kind of a subjective feature. There's no way to say which is the best. Now, I've been running on Fat Shark SEs for a while, and they have a huge 50 degree field of view, which is nice, but when you're flying very fast and you have a big screen in front of you, your eyes are having to do more work to look around to see what's coming at you. These new guys are working off of a 37 degree field of view, which is small and a lot of people would argue that that's worse, but it just depends on what you're looking for. It just depends on if you're a front of the movie theater kind of guy, mid-range, or all the way in the rear. The next feature is DVR and playback. So a lot of the higher end goggles, the HDOs included, they have a memory card slot, they have a little module inside. You can record your flight. Now you're not recording HD, you're recording the FPV signal that's coming in. So you're gonna be recording the static, all the breakup, and the low resolution transmission. Um, but it is good, uh, especially if you're a racer and you're not flying with a GoPro or say like you're like me and you crash your quad, you have no idea where it is, you have it on here, you can look at the footage and see where you went down and go try to find your quad. The next thing is kind of just like form factor, uh, like this leather, which is new and I'm actually a really big fan of. The foam that's on some of the previous Fat Sharks is just a nightmare in my cases, uh, but also like the ventilation fan is super nice to keep, your, uh, to keep your screens from getting fogged up. And those are minor features, they are definitely nice. I call them luxury features. The next thing is your module and your module bay. So whether or not it comes with an FPV module, when I say module, I basically mean the FPV receiver. So without a module, you can't fly FPV. So these guys for $500 do not come with a module. So you're gonna end up having to buy something like this. This is a True D Diversity, um, which works really, really well, but it is something to keep in mind when you're shopping around. Um, something like the Attitude V4s, those come with a module. Granted, it's not as nice as this one, um, but it does have that module and also the ability ability to switch them out because a lot of the goggles that come with a module out of the box it's permanent, it's stuck in there and you can't customize it and switch to something like this with diversity if you wanted to down the road. So it's just something else you gotta think about. The next thing is the overall form factor. So several years ago, they added this face mask thing. They used to have eye cups. And uh, this is just something that you can do uh, by just trying them out and trying them on. And if you don't have a hobby store that sells these, uh, I would recommend just going to a local fly and go to a to go to a FPV club, look for a multi-GP race and just go around, make some friends and see what kind of goggles they're using. And befriend them and just say, hey, can I check those out? Because everybody's face is different, everybody's eyes are different, and so there's only one way to, to test it, is to try them out. So form factor is definitely a big one. The next thing is the IPD, inner pupillary distance, I think is what that stands for, and that's these things. And most of the higher end, or mid-range to higher end fat sharks all have this. And this is basically shifting your screens inside the goggle to the, you know, towards the center or towards the outside. And so this does have the sliders, and this is a 59 millimeter to 69 millimeter 
Raider. And that's pretty much the same as all the other Fat Shark goggles out there to my knowledge. Everyone's face is different. So if you've had success with Fat Sharks in the past, chances are these are gonna work fine. If Fat Sharks never really fit right, you couldn't get it to focus in the past, still not gonna be able to use these, unfortunately. Now, one thing that I will mention, going back to the field of view, um, the wider the field of view, the more hard it is to get the screen perfectly in focus. And I've noticed with my 50 degree uh, Fat Shark SEs, you're, you're normally never gonna get the screen perfectly in focus. And to me, that's one of the drawbacks of having such a wide field of view is that you're gonna get the blurry edges. When you have a smaller field of view and it feels like the screen is just a tad bit farther away, you're going to be able to focus the whole screen uh, a little bit better. It's not to say it's gonna be perfect, um, but depending on, everyone's eyes are different. Depending on your eyes, you can adjust these accordingly and get it as focused as possible to have the best experience. And then the last one is, is more of a minor feature, but it is important to uh, a specific type of user, and that is your inputs and outputs. First is your inputs. Now, this has a HDMI as well as an AV, and now the cool thing is, is if you're a guy that is just getting into racing, but say you have some DJI, you know, phantoms or something like that, if you wanna input uh, any kind of HD signal and use this with something other than your race quad, it gives you that flexibility in the future if you wanted to use something other than your module that you're using in the goggles to have a little bit more custom experience. Now, up until these goggles, the only screen type that you could get is LED. Now, these are coming with the new OLED, um, which, like I said earlier, is just going to give you a more vibrant picture. It's gonna be a little bit more contrasty. It's gonna look just a little bit better, not as flat. Again, this is something else that is also going to be subjective because why it, it, while it is a more vibrant picture, it's still not like you're watching like a, you know, HDR movie or anything like that. It is an analog crappy signal with breakup. It's not HD by any means. And for those of you out there who are already into the FPV hobby, you know what that means. But for somebody who's new, uh, don't expect to get like an Oculus or like a ultra HD experience through these. Um, it is gonna be your standard analog. So anyways, that's just my quick breakdown of my understanding of goggles. Now I've been around goggles uh, pretty much for a long time. I've, I've used most of the Fat Sharks. And while uh, there's not anything like crazy groundbreaking, the new screen on this is nice. Personally, I'm a huge fan of this leather. I just never really was a huge fan of the old crappy foam that they used to put on there. So it is a step in the right direction. A lot of the updates on this are subjective. So it's, it's really up to you on whether or not you decide that it's something that you want or not. And if you are looking into getting your first set of goggles, depending on your budget, this could be a good option for you. All right, so that's enough of me yabbering. I'm gonna go outside and get some flight hours on on these new goggles. Hopefully, if you guys are new to FPV, this video helped you out. If you haven't yet, consider subscribing. We do new videos like this all the time. Hit the subscribe button and we'll see you guys next time. First day, Fat Shark HDOs. Dude. I, I, am I flying through the GoPro or <laughs> did I put a different camera on? I'm not, I'm realistically, I'm not joking around. These goggles are seriously clear. Um, when they say that it's more vibrant and you can get a lot more contrast, a lot more colors and clarity because of the OLED displays, they're not lying. Yeah. These things are insane.